early April this year, Kenya has witnessed a surge of protest against the finance bill, which has been seen by many as a detrimental to the average citizens. But what has caught everyone's attention is the claim by President William Ruto that the Ford Foundation, a globally renowned organization known for promoting social justice and development, is behind this protest. Now guys, before we continue, let us first of all understand who the Ford Foundation is. You see, Ford Foundation was established in the year 1936 by Edsel Ford and his father Henry Ford. The Ford Foundation has a long history of supporting initiatives that they promote social justice, reduce poverty, and advance human welfare. You see guys, their work actually spans across education, human rights, art, and the culture impacting communities worldwide, including here in the Republic of Kenya. Now guys, some reliable sources actually are claiming that it is the US government that passed this information to President William Ruto about the Ford Foundation having a hand in this uh, ongoing protest. Now, these reliable sources also are saying on 13th of July this month, that's, that was on Saturday, last Saturday, that President William Ruto and the US ambassador had met somewhere in Nairobi. And that is when this information was passed to President William Ruto about the Ford Foundation actually funding this ongoing protest. Now, guys, that's why you see, also without forgetting, let me tell you, these sources actually also are saying that President William Ruto was not only given this information, but he was also given with heavy evidence showing how these people, how this organization is funding protest. That's why you see President William Ruto chose not to talk about it on, on Sunday because it was on church day. He waited until on Monday 15th, while from Nakuru, you could hear, guys, how President William Ruto was very sure about what he was saying. That's when now he mentioned the Ford Foundation. We have no use for anarchy and violence and destruction of property and loss of life. Wale ambao wana sponsor you of violence. Sisi tunawajua. And I want to call out those who are behind the anarchy in Kenya. Those who are behind the sponsoring the chaos in the Republic of Kenya. Shame on them because they are sponsoring violence against our democratic nation. Mimi nataka niulize watu wa Ford Foundation watu ambie hiyo pesa wanatoa wanatoa ifanye fujo ndio wapate faida gani. For William Ruto to come out and say something like that guys, he might have had evidence and he might have received those evidence and the information from from a very reliable sources like the US and I'm not doubting about that. Now, this made me guys actually to think you see, previously, we've seen former Prime Minister Raila Morodinga organizing many protests, numerous protests we've ever seen from Raila Morodinga in this country. Later have we seen, guys, a well-organized, arranged, and let me tell you guys, Raila Morodinga has never organized his protests like the way we've seen the Gen Z crew have organized theirs. Let me tell you, let's start with the communication, guys. These people, they've got a proper channel of communication. Let me tell you, this guy, there is no any confusion. For real, there's no any confusion in this Gen Z crew protest. Let me give you an example. Do you remember the day Raila Morodinga and William Ruto actually were meeting at the KCC? William Ruto was, was, uh, was signing this, uh, this new bill of the IBC. The night before that day, actually the Gen Z crew had decided they are going to have a mother of all protest in Nairobi CBD. All of a sudden, I don't know where the communication came, guys. These people postponed protesting. Now, let me ask you. Who told them not to go? Because we didn't see any, confu any confusion. Confusion is such a way that uh, some people could have, could have gone actually ahead and protest and others not because there is no conf confusion, guys. We did this and the communication reached, made sure that it has reached each and every person. It's like these people, guys. They've got somewhere where they're, they're getting command from. Like the communication is coming from somewhere. Now, tell, let me ask you a question, guys. If, let me say I'm wrong about, about my thinking. Who, may, who told them not to go? Whom do they listen? Because somebody, anybody cannot actually tell them, oh, President William Ruto will be in town, please don't go. No, it must have been come from somebody, the owner of the protest, because that's the only person who can stop it. Because the night before that day of William Ruto and Raya Mrodinga meeting at the KCC, they had decided that they are going to have a mother of all protest. Now, where did the communication come from? Where did the command come from the, or the order to stop the protest? Are you telling me these people are leaderless? 
Let us be sincere. Let us put on our thinking caps. Let us use wisdom, guys. I'm not speculating. It is, a, it is out there, guys. Because that day, they were supposed to protest in town. Now, where exactly did this uh, command came from? To stop them, we didn't see any 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 confusion whereby other counties we could see maybe protests going on. No, it was calm. It was very calm. It's like somebody from somewhere came out and said, "Today, no protesting," and they all obeyed. Guys, are you telling me sure I'm wrong about my thinking that these people, the Zikru, they have a they have a, a commanding center? Am I wrong to say that? Now, let's talk about even also the printing, the designing of the printing of T-shirts. Guys, printing of one t-shirt actually will cost will cost uh, one person a thousand. And these people, there are thousands of out there, and everybody and everybody has got a t-shirt. Let me ask you a question: Are you telling me somebody and just a normal person can go ahead and print a t-shirt of thousands of people? Never. This must be a very well lab organization can do this, guys. Now let's talk about even the flyers. Ruto must go flyers. For example, if tomorrow they are going to occupy a place. The kind of flyers guys will be making rounds in social media, they of high quality. Now tell me, who does all this uh, designing of flyers? Whether you believe me or not, these people have got somebody who is funding them. And I'm not trying to speculate, I'm very sure. Somebody who is funding them and they've got a commanding center. Another source actually came out and said the day of parliament occupation, the day uh, Gen Z occupied, uh, occupied the, the parliament, some sources are saying, that the Ford Foundation actually hired some well-trained men and these, are, these men were able to push this, the Kenyan police who are manning the parliament compound out of the compound and that is when now the Gen Z crew actually made, made access into, into the parliament. I'm not sure about that but you could see guys actually some people they were very highly trained and they actually they could be able to push the Kenyan police. You can imagine men pushing the record squad. The record squad were called and they were, they were overpowered. Are you telling me guys because of the Gen Z can actually overpower the record squad, highly trained record squad, to be pushed out of the parliament compound. This might be some people who are very highly trained and they were very organized. That's my thinking. Now, guys, President William Ruto's remarks from Nakuru have polarized opinions, with some believing these allegations while others remain skeptical. This brings us to the latest development in this unfolding story. My friends, without any fear, you will find me among the people who believe these allegations. I don't believe whether it is Ford Foundation funding the Gen Z crew or not, but one thing is for sure, the Gen Z crew, they are not only have uh, an organization that is funding them, but they are also receiving orders from somewhere. Earlier in this video, I asked a question, guys. Who stopped these guys? Who told them or who commanded them? Let me use that word. Who commanded them not to protest the day uh, Right Honorable Rairo Dinga and William Ruto are meeting at the KCC to sign the IBC bill? Who told them not because the, the night before that day they had planned they said said and agreed that they are going to have a mother of all protest all of a sudden boom, they are not protesting why because president william bruto is in town guys are you telling me these people are leaderless <laughs> that they are not taking any command from somewhere even a class one kid will tell definitely tell you these people they've got a leader and these people they've got somebody funding them. I ask a question also who is actually funding the expensive t-shirt printing, the well-designed flyers. No, people, no guys, these people they've got a command, these people they've got somebody uh, who is actually funding them. Now guys, yesterday on 15th of July, that was on Monday, the Ford Foundation actually broke their silence and in an official letter, they vehemently denied any involvement in Kenyan protest. They reiterated that their commitment to promoting social justice and stated that they do not interfere in any political affairs of any country they are operating in. Now, my friends, so where does this leave us as the Republic of Kenya? Where does this leave us? See, on one hand, we have the Kenyan government pointing fingers at the Ford Foundation. And on the other, the Ford Foundation itself, actually, it is denying involvement. Now, where does this leave us? You see, guys, it is very hard for us common one to just tell whether the Ford Foundation actually is having a hand in this protest or not. But however, one thing actually making me not to start believing 80%, you see, President William Ruto is not a madman to just wake up one day and start pointing finger to a reputable organization like Ford Foundation. William Ruto is not a mad person. Because, you see guys, 
Forty Foundation, it is not only operating in the Republic of Kenya. They are operating in ho the whole world. It's a global company. Why will William Ruto wake up one morning and start pointing finger at such a company or such a, an organization? Think about it. Well, guys, those are my opinions. And I'm very sure or I am optimistic that you also have your own opinions, if not the same as mine. At the end of the day, let us not hate, hate each other because of our divided opinions. You see, guys, at the end of the day, we are all Kenyans and our opinions are focusing on the same product. Regardless of our opinions being different, but they are all focusing on the same product of making Kenya great. Okay? Because, guys, you see, we've got also our Gen Z crew out here saying they are united against the common enemy and that is poverty. If as long as guys, not making make no mistake, as long as our Gen Z crew out here are not being are not being used by foreign foreign organizations or, or foreign countries, then trust you me, we are pushing the same cause, making Kenya great. And tomorrow, you never know, guys, this country will go to the next level because of our effort. My name is Peter Tosh Williams. I'll see you guys in the next video, inshallah. This is Lifelines TV. If you haven't already, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel, share this video to your friends, to your crew, to whoever you think this video might be interesting to. And remember always that tomorrow is a brand new day. I'll see you guys in the next video, inshallah. Good for now. And let the Almighty God be with you. Goodbye.